come in front. Now, we're on board with Gavin Harlan. Harlan, very talented young driver here, not qualifying the way he's wanted to just yet this weekend. As he puts some pressure on Potts, goes to the inside. Is Potts going to let him go? He may be forced to go wide. Yes, he pushes him wide, side by side, off the Toyota Tires ramps for Potts and Harlan. Oh, someone has to get oh, here. Potts boy. almost lost control of that. Take a look at some replays, and Hines... Gee, aggressive this year. He's got so much confidence aboard that number 57. Says to Nolan, get out of the way. I want to win here today. Look at these guys. Look at Cole Potts in the 60. Hallmark Whoa. just not comp Chuck kicks the rear end out. Just gets it together there. Harlan moves in front of him. Nolan, I want off this next ramp. I'm going to do what I got to do to make it happen. Hildebrand getting a little sideways there as well. He has now got his sights set on the number one of Paul the Dude Morris. So Nolan from pole has gone back to 12th position behind Brabham and Gordon. So Leindijk Jr. grabs the race lead at the top, and look at the Hoff <laughs> trying to push his way through with his teammate, if you like, in the road pod colours this week. For 25. That's bad news for everyone, because Ari's fast. These guys are battling out. It is at times. He's led plenty of races, but it just hasn't come up with a W next day. And who was that lad? It was... Dans la vie, la route tourne, mais là, elle a du mal à tourner dans le bon sens pour moi. Olha, só onde escapou. O Galide descapou um pouco mais à frente. Não me pareceu o carro dele estar numa situação perigosa para a entrada do safety car. Mas. A direção de prova sim entende. Ele foi tocado pelo Alan Kodair, hein? Houve um toque do Alan ali por trás do Júlio. Júlio vem com o botão de ultrapassagem. Me parece que foi tocado pelo Alan. E deu essa escapada. Davis Houses. Look at the replay. Nick Perk out there on Todd Kelly. And you see there, the instantly no brakes. He's gone to the inside to miss drill in the back of Todd Kelly. He's gone across the inside of the tyre bundle, backed his car into the rear of Lee Holdsworth, and it has opened the back of that BJR Commodore up, taking the rear windscreen out. I've never seen one of the new rear windscreens break like that. And I think this was a case of, well, I either hit Todd Kelly or I bail out of that and try and avoid and get lucky and avoid everyone. And Holdsworth copped the brunt of that in the right rear corner of the Preston Hire Commodore, as did Brad Jones Racing Car. Incredible livery for this weekend. And gee, what started out as a really promising day for Brad Jones Racing ends terribly. And there's Nick. So he's pretty keen to get over to Lee and just let him know that uh, it wasn't him trying. No, no brakes. Oh, yeah. There you go. So Nick. Across the Rolex sign at the inside of turn one, and he was speaking about braking. I think there was none failure. of it going on there. That's either a brake failure or a stuck throttle. Nick did his absolute very best to get to the inside, but unfortunately tagged. Lee Holdsworth, and that's taken the wind out of him. Good to see him out of the car, but you never like to see cars doing 250k an hour and having no stopping ability. That's a big impact. Huge initial... Oh, man, look at the damage to the back of the Brad Jones Racing Commodore. We're under safety car, naturally. That car in a dangerous position, and... And Lee was Gee. nearly past. He nearly got he that so gap close between to get the cars. In the gas. But it, I would suggest a bit of suspension damage to Lee's car. I reckon that car will be back out, if not this afternoon, tomorrow. But I'd be surprised if we see Nick Perkett's car out for the rest of the weekend. That would have done a lot of damage to the left rear and also right up to the parcel shelf for that Commodore. They had such a tough year last year, Preston High Racing. Charlie Schwerkholz's team had a big crash for Lee Holdsworth at Hidden Valley. Um, destroyed a car, had to get a new one built, turned it round. They had replacement drivers in their cars. Uh, really tough, tough initial season in supercar racing for that outfit since moving across to Holden. And just looking to stay out of trouble this weekend and learn and get up to speed. You're right about the damage and popping that rear screen out. And these cars built the next generation supercars, car of the future when it was launched, were built to sustain that kind of an impact better than the previous spec cars. They moved the fuel cell forward of the rear axle so they're much, much better at absorbing those rear impact. And you would have thought with an older gen car, 
that would have created a few more issues for Nick Perkat and fuel cells hanging out over the rear axle. So if you're going to crash, do it in one of these cars because they're very, very safe. And you can see the extra row of protection so that a lot of the corners have got an extra row of tyres. Oui, Patrick, you oh. Là, j'espère que Patrick est sorti de sa voiture. C'est en aller immédiatement dans la zone de dégagement. C'est ce que je crains le plus dans la compétition de sport motorisé. J'ai vécu des situations tout au cours de ma jeune carrière. Et le feu, c'est incontrôlable lorsque ça arrive. Oui. Il faut, faut, faut mentionner aussi que les pilotes hein, sont, sont serrés. This is G That's a nasty rollover. I, you can see him moving inside the car there. He's, he's just holding onto his belts there at the moment. Ken would, Ken would, uh, would definitely be shaken up right now. He just caught the tail end of it in the car. This is G House. I already on lap number one. Oh, and no. two trucks real sideways. Oh, and we've got a truck up and over a big pirouette. That was a big wreck right now for the always evolving AE now number 75. And it's Jake Kostecki. He's not going nowhere in a hurry. He is uh, hoping he is still going to be up and going, but he is on a three-wheeler. Now, let's. I'm hoping that that means Kostecki is saying, hey, you know what? I, I am okay. It's crazy hard hits. You can see the cage there. Everything's intact. Everything's in good shape, except uh, now he is down to a three-wheeler. That was a wild ride right there for Kosecki. That's a lot of damage to this truck. I haven't seen a truck pull apart like that in a long, long time. And they warned about this going side by side through here in the driver's briefing this morning. Two trucks get together in mid-air. Nothing you can do about it there. And look at the way. And the wow. dude was lucky. He probably got a bit of damage to his truck too on the way through. But dude. massive damage to truck 75. The always evolving entry that we'd see Eric Davison in contact. Wow. With Hines perhaps. Oh, real wild ride there. Wait, I've, I have seen every lap of this series. I have yet to see a truck come apart like that, but it really doesn't matter what happened to the truck or how it happened. All that matters is that uh, Jake Kosecki is in good shape, and he's giving thumbs up, saying he's all right. And it, it looks like we're going to go into another replay here in just a moment. Really extreme, super ah, slow-mo. Contact with Melbourne. So it's Melbourne, he's clashed with mid-air, slowing it right down. And contact like magnets in the mid-air. Both of them sideways on their own. It looks like to me, both those trucks ran it in on the loud pedal a little too deep. They both unloaded the sidewalls of the tires and the suspension, everything unloaded together. They contacted and it looks like Jake, he got the short end of the stick on that D. Look at the camera angles Thumbs we have up. got here around today. This is phenomenal. That is incredible. That is the shot of the year. Yes, it is. Bajo antes de buscar por afuera. Frena sobre el paso. Claro, frena sobre el paso. Y en el cruce inevitable, lo sacude de atrás al auto de Gastón, que después encima copia todo el muro. Todo el murite colocado allí. The question is how much damage our Sackler Scalpo has huge damage on his car. The rest of the field's raced on. In fact, he needs to pull that one over. There's a fire underneath that car. Up front, Cam Hill has taken the win on a dramatic last lap. Steve Owen is second, Jimmy Vernon's third, but half the field stuck halfway around the lap. Yes, and this car is uh, definitely having an exciting finish. Well, well that's that's no, keen to get back to take the finish. There's a fiery There's there. fire extinguishers right there on pit wall, so they'll be there to help that car. In just a moment, Zach Lascalpo will bail out of it. He's made it across the line, and they need to get onto that quickly because that's starting to take a hold. A dramatic way to finish race 13. We've had title contenders wiped out. We've had a last lap accident. We had a safety car in the middle of the race. And unfortunately now, 
We have a car on fire here on pit straight. On the starting grid, whoever's starting in position nine in the next race won't be very happy about No, that. definitely not, Leanne. That's absolutely right. Good news is that Zach's OK. He's stepped from that car. The fire is just straight onto it to try to look after that, but it's so, still burning underneath. That doesn't look good, and I think, sadly, that might be uh, might be the end of his, his weekend, it looks like. Yeah, it's going to be hard to, uh, to salvage that one with a race to come in. I think about four hours time and then another race uh, tomorrow morning so plenty of drama here in Newcastle let's have a look again at what unfolded Liam McAdam in the background he got a tag from Zach Scalpo so that's where the damage came from the Scalpo that's ended up with his car catching on fire and then the rest of these guys have nowhere to go there's just no chance it's a blind corner and even if there's yellow flags out quickly they're already there so many times the wheel parts ways look where it goes and just gives the bridge a shake now just to reassure people nobody can walk across those bridges when this race is on look at that wild wild ride 